Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Headcrack After Hours. He's one of the most solid dudes in the game, man. He got multiple franchises. He's a friend of the show. One time for Caesar. Yeah, what's Black up? <laughs> what's up? What's up, yeah? Welcome back, fam. Thank you, brother. I'm Let's glad see. to be here, man. I feel like 12 months has gone by. Yeah. A lot has happened over those last 12 a months. A whole lot. There's been some faux engagements. Yeah. New foes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but nothing but success along the way, man. Yeah, where, where, where success it comes to struggle, man. You got to, sometimes people don't think about the hurdle. You think about just the goal. And I ain't going to lie, I stumbled on a lot of hurdles this year, but I'm still trying to get to that goal. Word. Now, since we last chatted, um, you opened up Black Ink Atlanta. Right. Uh, shout out to my man, uh, my man, uh, uh, Chigga over there. Mm -hmm, Chigga uh, over there. Uh, shout out my man, my man to be rhyming. Rich Mo. Rich Mo. Rich Mo. Solid dude. I ran into him in South by again, yeah. too. Both of those guys. I was, we supposed to, I was supposed to be out there for South by, but I was still filming. But understand. next year, I will be having something big in South. Let's put it like this. I'm bringing my own convention vibe to Southwest. Like, I'm going to bring, I got mobile buses now. That I'm putting together. I'm bringing a whole bunch of them. Have some artists perform in the parking lot out. There. Like I'm trying to do it real big. Like I'm trying to change the whole culture of tattooing. You know, and people like a lot of times feel to realize how deeply connected hip hop and the art world is in that regard. Because yeah. like you know, you always put graffiti into the realm of what you know one of the pillars of hip hop is. But and, and tattooing is graffiti on the body. Exactly. That's where most of the graffiti artists went to when. The boys start snatching us up for, 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 for messing up buildings. Most of us went to tattooing. And plus, graffiti wasn't paying the bills. Tattooing was. It was like, honestly, it goes hand in hand, tattooing and the hip hop culture. Yeah. Like, you ain't going to see a rap artist without tattoos. Honestly, if you don't have a face tattoo right now, you're not, you're not valid as an as a artist. Just put it like that. You know it's I mean? weird how things go in seasons because there's going to be a time in like 10 years where like, you know. And people ain't going to do it. Yeah. And you can tell who like the failed rappers were because mm -hmm. like, you know, dude, the Smoothie King right mm -hmm. now got a face tattoo <laughs> repping his click. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you ever had to advise somebody to not get a certain tattoo? Uh, like, yo, fam, maybe that's not a good idea right now. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. I ran into this issue with my, yo, my boy, Moneybags. He want to do some crazy. I'm like, bro, we can't do that, man. Come on, like, chill out, man. But we did some, we did some face tattoos on him, but he wants to do some crazy shit like on his cheek. I like, hold up. Let's chill for a little. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you just got to go with it. They want to express themselves. They want to rock out. So, you know, most of the time I'll rock out with them. But if it's something crazy, they'll be like, hold on, let's chill. Because that's both our reputations on the yeah. line right now. Like, is it a hard job to do having a conscience? Like, say somebody comes into your shop, right? Tipsy drunk. And you do, you know, damn well, this nigga work at, like, Harvard. <laughs> or, like, so, or at some law firm. <laughs> like, yo, bro, like... This is an impulse decision you're making right now. But he coming through with that bag. Hmm. All right. Put it like this. I have done that, but I don't do that no more. I, I really, I'm really conscious of what I do to people now, especially my people. Mm -hmm. Because I understand there's a rep representation that you have to go out in the field with. Like, let's say you're, you, like you said, a lawyer. You can't go to court, show up to court with with um only God could judge me on your <laughs> on your eyelids. Like you can't do that. So it's like I taught them as a professional, like, yo, you don't even know what you want to do in your life yet. Just yeah. do something moderate right now. Cause you're probably going through something that you just want to jump out. Cause I ain't gonna tell you no lie. Most of my like my impulsive tattoos that I got places was because I was it was impulsive, like right. my face tattoo. I got it three days after Chinks died because it was impulsive and I felt some type of way because I had just talked to him like a week before he died and we was talking about putting together a music and ink tour, a whole thing. We put the rap and we put the ink together and we toured the, the, the country and we put acts together and then he he got killed like that. It was like, it hurt me. And that's most of the time when, when people get tattooed, not saying morning, but it'd be impulse. You're feeling something, you're going through something. Let me just put myself through some pain and get something to remember this moment. Yeah, like a tribute. Now, I, I was reading that you guys are doing some at your shops where you're honoring Nipsey Hussle yeah. by doing Nipsey Hussle tattoos. Is this something that's going to go just for a couple of weeks? Is this like a year long thing? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, when I did it, it, when I first did the promotion and announced it, it was I was in an emotional state. You feel me? Like I met I met Nipsey way before he became Nipsey Hupsu. Like I met him like when he first started his career. He came to New York. He came uh my boy Shice. He told me come to the come to the studio, come tattoo him. 
tattooing him and his boys. I forgot what I put on him. It was his crew's name. Mm -hmm. So what happened was from that from that moment, he left an impression on me. Like he was cool. He reminded me of Snoop. Cool, smoke wild weed and whatnot. And then I met and then we met up again once I was on TV and we were both proud of each other. We was doing things. And then the last thing I read about him and I was the Forbes. He made the Forbes as a real estate mogul. And I was gonna call him like, yo, bro, I'm proud of you. And then I see his passing. I wake up to his passing and Puma hitting me like, yo, bro, we need to settle everything before, you know what I mean, God forbid something happens to one of us. And they just caught me off. God is like, he's just like me. I'm I'm in my hood every all the time when I'm back in New York. If you, anyone knows the first Black Ink, 113th, which I stay at most of the time. It's a cross street from the most biggest and tourist projects in Harlem. And he was doing right. He was doing what he was supposed to do. He was looking out for his people. And it just hit me like it really hit home. And it was like this, 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 this cycle is too repeated. We just one moment is like, oh, we morning, morning. And then a month later, we just forget about the lesson that just we were just taught. This happened with Pac. It happened with Biggie. It's happening to this day, yo. And it's like, when we gonna sit here and learn? Like, we gotta chill out, yo. Like, yeah. we're gonna stay keep blaming oppressor, oppressor, but it, it's we have to take blame for we it. We do the most damage. Yeah, we to do ourselves. the most damage to ourselves. Like, it was crazy how people were trying to say he got assassinated. Now we assassinating him ourselves, yo. By us. Not sitting here understanding, like, yo, we're killing each other. And this is why I, I'm doing this. This is not for no clout chasing, no popularity, for no TV. This is just so we don't forget the lesson. Like, every time you look at your flesh, you're going to remember the word this man left, the lesson he was trying to teach us. You know, like, it's deeper than just tattoos, it's a life lesson. So, if it's with you for the rest of your life, you're never going to forget what Nipsey Hussle did for this, for this culture. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, like, you know, you live long enough, you get a, you get the opportunity to see a lot of your idols and your icons pass and transcend. And like, you know, even though I haven't listened to his entire catalog as much as I've listened to like Pun, mm -hmm. Biggie, Pac, this one hurt yeah. because it was the things he did outside of music yeah, it wasn't that just made me. it that transcended everything. And that's the and that's the thing. Like, if it was just music, yeah, but. He was about, even in his music, he was about a different message. Yeah. He's about ownership, doing other things, learning finan fi financial gains and stuff, and certain structures. It's stuff that I'm learning now at, at, as a young black man because I'm getting money and I'm doing certain things and I'm starting a franchise. So to see him, he, he was in his hood. He never left his hood. His GQ shoot was in his hood. Like, that was so respectable, yo, you know? That, yo, that, yo. For him to go out like that, that's what really hurt the most because it was like he never stopped repping. Like most of the time when you get to a certain plateau, you move out your hood. You still got that mentality, but uh, I'm, I'm good with that. You know what I mean? He had a joint. He had a, a, a wife in the in the hills. He didn't have to come back to the... He could have stayed in the hills and be aight because I know Cali... Like there's a, there's a difference between yes. the hood and the hills. Like, <laughs> right. There's exactly. a whole big difference. So he could have stayed in the hills and be good. He did what he did, but he was still repping. He stood... That's where he was comfortable with. And then that's the same problem I have because I'm still comfortable in my hood. I, I don't walk around with security. I don't do none of that. People be like, are you crazy? You just... This is my hood, man. Like, I, 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 I ain't gonna change. This is where I feel comfortable. I mean, Caesar, real quick to give you your props. You've made a lot of stars out of a lot of people. There's a lot of people that the world knows now because of your franchises and the things you've done. And you know, people tell me all the time, "Yeah, I went to the shop and blah blah blah." Caesar was there. And like, do you ever feel like you're too accessible to that degree? Or, I mean, because I know some of us is how we are. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know, the funny thing is, my mom called me and told me that. She said, I'm, too, I'm way too accessible, especially after this situation. Like, I got the call from Puma, and then I got the call from my mother. And for my mother to really feel it, and my mom's met Nipsey. Like, she met him before. I didn't even know she met him. You know what I mean? And she was telling me, I'm like, my, you don't know no Nipsey. Get out of here, yo. Be quiet. She's like, no, I met him. He knew me from this show. I was like, where? Because I know Nipsey, like, he watches the show, and I keep forgetting, like, my whole family been on the right. TV. You know what I mean? So, with her, it was like... Son, you're way too accessible. Like, you're going to have to change your mentality. And honestly, I'm trying to change it now because I always thought, like, only punks sit around, walk around with security. But 
in this day and age now, I'm sorry. I got to live for my daughter and my family. So I'm 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 going to be having security, armed um, security in all times and whatnot. I have to guard my future because I have to leave a legacy to my daughter. And I don't want no one sniping me out before I'm able to achieve my mission. And that's so scary that, like, you know, where, like, you can be taken out while doing good. Like, you know, like, the, the Nipsey story got worse and worse as the days progressed. Yo, he was up at the shop chilling. Yo, he went up to the shop to get some clothes for his homeboy who just got out of jail. Yo, he shook the dude's hand. That sh- you know, like, it's like, damn, you know, like, and the thing is, you out here, you're truly doing God's work. And blessing the people and inspiring people. And, you know, like, I would hate to see anything happen to you, bro. But, and that's the funny Especially thing. being, like, you know, it, like, you know, up top, you know, everybody ain't always gonna be happy for your success. And that's the thing. You don't know if they, when they're shaking hands and smiling, if it's really love or it's really hate. And that's what, that's, that's what's so messed up about this world nowadays. It's like, no matter how much good you have towards another person, they'll still hate you for something that you can't, you can't control. Yeah. All right, well, you know, switching gears again to a lighter mm-hmm. size, get this shenanigan. Uh, you were engaged <laughs> to Carly Red for a second. No, I wasn't. That's what they were saying. What, what, no, no. you was in a relationship with Carly a Red. A relationship. relationship. Okay. okay, there we go. Ooh, come on, man. All right. I only got engaged one time in my life, and that, that, that didn't work out good. <laughs> that didn't work out good at all. How's she doing, by the way? Which one? Uh, old girl from North Carolina. Was, was, oh, we don't talk. At we, all? Oh, not at all. Really? She, she mad. She big mad. I, I think I, I think after that that rap record she made, I think she just she was really the mad one. I don't know. We don't talk at all, bro. Sometimes the relationship people, people don't break up well. Like it, guys, we can kind of move on. Yeah, like you know, we got if I see I gave a high five, hey, what's up, homie? Like you chilling? I'm chilling. Like mm-hmm. it is not no. But what it is, I really think because the way the situation went. And it was like, it was supposed to be the other way around. She thought like, oh, I'm going to get my own TV show. I'm going to go to the moon. You will bum. Uh, uh, uh. And as soon as she, she left, I went to the moon. Like, I went, got other shops. I stopped being scared. I started really feeling myself. Sometimes it takes that getting out of a relationship to start stepping out in the world and really understand who you is. Yeah. No, I mean, no shot at Shorty, but there was a meme I saw one day on Instagram. This dude said, uh, this girl said, I was with you. You got locked up when you got robbed and uh, and you wasn't shit. And he's like, yeah, you were bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I moved on. But, yeah. you know, but sometimes it'd be like that. Like sometimes certain energies don't match. Exactly. With, you know, like with what the universe has in store for you. And sometimes you got to separate. And right. maybe things are bad when y'all together and maybe she meets somebody that helps her propel to the next level. And that's what I, I, I hope for the best for her. But like, like I'm saying, I'm good. I like being who I am right now. It the seems like you're having the time of your life at all times. I am. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'll be having my little struggle trying to figure stuff out as a business. Side, but it's good to come home and not have to deal with the headaches. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because sometimes in relationships, they are headaches, yo. You got to deal with the nagging. It's like, I don't know, man. I, I am going to get myself back into another relationship. Then. I got gotcha. Because I kind of been single for a little while now. And people starting to look at me like, oh, you're a whore. But I'm really not. I'm just busy running businesses. It's a big vetting process. Yeah, too. you know what I mean? It is. Like, you got to you gotta be selective in what nowadays. Like, when I heard that you and Carly Redwood thing for a second, I'm like, oh, man, not another one. Yeah. Like, and, and I'd be rooting for Carly Red because, like, she, 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 she actually is a talented artist. She dope as hell. Yo, listen, and people don't really give her props for that. I, I'm not going to lie. Out of all my exes, me and Carly probably clicked the most. It was just... We just couldn't see eye to eye at that time. Like it was just a whole bunch of stuff. But honestly, outside of TV, Carly's a, a nice person. Yeah, like, uh, she's the first person to ever, as a gift, give me a Bible. But I think she's running game on my mom's. But I don't know. Man. Did you go through every page of that Bible? It might have been like a blunt in it, or like you know. nah. That shit. You know, honestly, it's still wrapped up in plastic in my shop. See, <laughs> sometimes people do things just to see if you like. Open or gifted, like you know, or like, or like really, like you know, like used whatever they. I was gonna gift it back, but she had it engraved with my name, so I can't do that. Yeah, you got So cool. So, <laughs> yeah, so you out here floating in these streets, you moving good. Mom's yeah, doing all right. Mom's I remember, doing all right. Mom's like one of your biggest supporters. Yeah, she love me. I got sometimes I got a lot of her and tell her where I'm at because she'll just pop up on me, man. Like my mom's. A pop- I remember I did something evil to my mom's man. Yeah, listen, she popped up at a strip joint. Didn't even know it was the strip joint. Oh man, she got. <laughs> She had the lap dance and walk out of there, man. She had the quickest lap dance in the world. Really? Like 10 seconds. I was like, nah, that's my mom. Don't get her. Get her. What club? Um, it was something in Orlando. It was during Super, it was during Pro Bowl weekend. 
Oh man, that was a beautiful weekend. <laughs> she was mad at me, but my pops is happy. <laughs> so your mom and pops are still together? Mm -hmm. That is such a rarity. Like yeah. I've, 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 if I've interviewed ten people in the last month, two of them had parents that were still together. Yeah, my 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 parents they they together. They ain't going nowhere. They they stuck to the hip. My, my pops pop in the business too. He drove. Nah, my pops was in real estate. Okay. Yeah, he was a real estate um mogul. Like he was big in the real estate. He used to sell. Like a whole bunch of real estate in Florida and whatnot. He's retired now. He got a couple buildings. Yeah, same thing with me. He got me into buildings and whatnot. I got like two buildings in the Bronx. This hustles in your DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I hustle. Like I got I'm opening up like four more shops. I got like I told you, I got the mobile um tattoo buses coming out this summer. And I'm also starting my new my own convention in a couple cities next year. Got gotcha. like ten cities. Yeah, keep it light, you know. I'm trying to get to the bag, man. As I'm trying, you should. And I'm trying to I'm trying to do something different. Because as a culture, we we sometimes we sometimes don't understand our potential and what we can do. And I feel like with this tattoo industry, I need to show that as a black man, it, it could be ran by a black man. Like we too eager, we too eager to sit here and say, yo, we're gonna be a athlete or a musician or an entertainer. Nah, we got to show that we could take over anything we put our minds to. If I sit here and say I'm taking over the garbage industry, I'm going to take over the garbage industry. You know, we are really quick to uh, abandon certain things and be like, ah, that's for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then like the ones who are always the, the trailblazers and the pilot pioneers of that other thing, they seem to do really well. Like, I mean, Tiger Woods with the golfing, the Williams sisters with the tennis. Now you're seeing more minorities getting into that field. No think, pun intended. I think, I think, get into it. I think it's a fear. I mean, sometimes when you're comfortable, you get stagnant. I think in our culture, we, we got comfortable. We only see a couple ways to get to the bag and don't understand it's a very, very small percentage of us that will make it to that bag in the industry. We have to we have to start exploring other means of income. Got you. Now, if you're like myself, and I feel like you are to some certain extent, you like a good broken bird that mm -hmm. you could try to help. Tommy Lee is one of my favorite people. Like, I I be like legit rooting for her success. And like, you know, to the point where like I feel like when she comes in here, she don't even think I'm being sincere, but I I fucking mean every word of it. When is the last time you talked to her? Because I know y'all kind of tight to some degree, right? Yeah, me and Tommy, me, Tommy, Sky, we all tight. You know what I mean? That's Sky's best friend. That's my sister, so you already know. Right. With Tommy now, I'll just be feeling like Tommy be getting a bad rap. Like, people don't, like, if you really sat down with her and understood her. First of all, Tommy's from Newark, okay? Okay. She's from Brick City. Their water's different. Yeah, they water different. <laughs> you know what I mean? They water wholly <laughs> different. You feel me? But at the end of the day, she's she's a kind-hearted person. No, like, like I and I see through all of that. Yeah. Like, when she comes through here, like, you know, we, like, she be having, like, real conversations. Yeah. And, like, I get pulled all the way in. And then when I see on the news, like, I'm in the middle of doing, like, a, a like you know, doing radio, it's like, Come on, Tommy, like... I, I say it again. Tommy's a cool... Yeah, you know, sometimes TV and people will, will drive you in a certain way that the editing will make you look crazy and don't put the whole story. Because I go through that, but you can't sit there and just blame TV. You have to blame some your actions sometimes. I'm not even talking about the show. I'm yeah, talking yeah. about, like, oh, oh, the news. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. even in the news, they already have a... Like me... They had me portray as a as a villain right now. Like, forget all the stuff I did in the past. This one incident I had with Donna and Alex, I'm the worst guy in the world. Forget what I've done in the So with her now, it's like she always has that, oh, it's Tommy. We're going to be extra. Her. I've seen officers be extra like, yo, you're bugging. Like, <laughs> she's a female. But I, I think, like, now Tommy has to sit in and really realize, like, maybe I'm landing in it for her no more. You feel me? Like... Maybe they just have it out for her because honestly, every time she comes to Atlanta, she gets into something. Like the one thing about her going to like go check her kid at school, yeah, you're a parent. Yeah. If your kid's wilding, you go check your kid. Or you're going to be checking them behind a glass, you know, behind glass at a prison. So and, sometimes you got to do what and you got to do. And this is what I mean. I didn't understand that story. Like, what? And my daughter's acting up, which she had. I'm going to the school and checking on myself. So it was like, there's a lot of stuff that people start be like, they'll put that on Tommy and say, oh, Tommy's, nah, Tommy's not a bad person. Honestly, if Tommy wasn't, wasn't who she was. I'd probably be dating Tommy. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah I, I, get, I get it. Yeah, I get I it. I get it. Yeah. Like, I like trouble. Yeah, I like trouble too, but, you know, 
Tommy, Tommy, <laughs> <laughs> we both be in jail like Bonnie and Clyde. Like, don't touch my woman. <laughs> I'll see you in a year. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> These walls can't hold us. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, recapping the whole uh, Alex and uh, with uh, Pen, Donna, uh, Donna situation. Yeah, like, so, for want. those who like missed that whole wave, what's that about? Because I hear you have a lot of regrets on how that whole played out. Yeah, listen, man. I got into my feelings. I'm not gonna lie. Like, you ever had a female that could push a button? And you like. You try to be logical, but it's like illogical, and they take you to that point like, mm -hmm. oh. And then it was like, what people didn't understand with that whole situation, they only saw like 30 seconds of when it went down. Right. If people know me, it takes a lot for me to get to a boiling point. We was arguing for a good 20 minutes. Like, I couldn't take it no more. And at the time, I was like, yo, you're not going to tell your girl to chill out. You already seen how I was acting toward you. You really not. I right, I can't take my frustration out on her. I'm, I'm going to have to holler at you. Right. And it just turned into some other, it turned into a whole mess. But end of the day, I could sit here and say I was wrong. I shouldn't even have been in that, that argument. I shouldn't have put myself in that situation. Like sometimes you just, it's easy to blame the other person. But in hindsight, you got to sit there and take, you got to take accountability of what you, your action. And then, I wasn't taking accountability for it at the time. It was like, man, she bugging and he should have checked her. I was still in my street mentality. And you ever have a hard time separating? Yo, bro. Because you're still in the mix. Yeah, it's like, it's hard because I still go home to the hood, but I still have to play in Hollywood. So it's like, it's two seasons. Like, it's Caesar that chills in the hood, you know, to, like, and there's Caesar that chills in Hollywood. And it's like, with that, you have to understand, you, especially as a black mogul and you're trying to represent something, you have to, you have to set yourself on a higher core. And what I did was I stooped down. I took myself down to a lower level. Where I could understand why people were so mad at me. Now. At first, I wasn't understanding. Me. Now I could understand, like, damn, I still never went. Like, I'm beyond that. Yeah. Like, the first fight in New Orleans, that was granted because he put his hands on my sister. But this one, homie really didn't want no smoke. And it's not my, it's not anyone's fault that he can't control his woman. Like, you know, that's just what it is. So, I took accountability to that. And I could see and say, yo, I'm, I was really sorry about that situation. Like, I really, really didn't want no harm to happen to him. But it was just, I caught my feelings. And it, with her, it was like, man, it was, I just couldn't take it. Yeah, sometimes it gets to a point where you, when a couple is fighting so much, y'all just got to, like, assess the damage and be like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't be together. Because, like, somebody either going to get hurt, somebody get locked up, maybe even worse, and, you know, there that go. And that's how I feel now. Like, at the end, of the, when when people watch the end of the season, they're going to realize, like, certain we, certain things just not supposed to mesh. You know what I mean? So, when you look at the whole body of work you got right now, you got Black, uh, Black Ink New York, mm -hmm. check. Black Ink Chicago, check. Black Ink Compton, taping right now. Mm -hmm. It feels good. Look, I... I it feels really good. Like, you got to understand, when I first came in this industry, I used to look up to people like um, Miami Inc., Kat Von D., you know what I mean? Like, people that was on TV. And I never used to see our faces. I never even seen us getting tattooed on TV. Mm -hmm. So for now, for Black Ink to be the predominantly tattooed show and the most popular show on cable TV, it makes me feel proud because... Black people are now starting to be at the forefront, and the industry is starting to change. Like I remember a time we couldn't even get into a magazine. Now we, we got we 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 can't. We booked up with magazine shoots, and it's just not black in New York, not just black in Chicago, and it's not just Compton. It's the whole urban industry. Like we're showing we're shining light on the industry itself and showing like black. Artists can run businesses too because what people don't understand the most they don't understand is every single black ink franchise is owned by a black man. And that's clapping. You know what I mean? Like, I remember what FUBU did. This is how it's going to be. And this is not just it. Like, we're going to keep expanding. I, I, I'm, my destiny is to have black inks in all 51 states and in, in London, 
is my retirement shop. I already got that in my head. So I'm retiring so, in London. So your exit strategy is to set up shop a whole bunch of places here. Yeah. End up in the UK. Yeah, I'm going to UK. I already got it. I'm gonna have a little British accent <laughs> with my penny loafers. You're gonna do a reverse 21 Savage. Yeah, reverse. You know what I mean? Have my tea and everything. Cause if they if they deport me, they just gonna send me back to America. I'm cool. Yeah, ain't yeah. a wrong there. Yeah. Like God, I'll do your best. Yeah. <laughs> you got to bring on seasons, man. They don't season any food well over there. Oh, I, I already know. <laughs> but yo, here's the thing. How we end up in Compton before we end up with Black Ink Atlanta on TV? Like, it's the black, the blackest, the blackest place, the blackest of ink. Um, all right. I already had this argument with VH1. Um, I don't want to show them, throw no shade, but you know, you, y'all already have a franchise down here and they ain't like how I did them on that franchise and they don't really like um, me stepping on their toes and being uh, in the same city, you feel me? So it's like, uh, no, yeah, no. Because we tried for it. I did shoot for it. Okay. It almost happened, but you know, once it goes up to the pipelines and it starts going to the major heads, it's like, yeah, we don't want to stir that pot up. So they left it alone. You know, what I would like to see, which I would think would be the toughest season ever, right. Black Ink Nigeria. Cause everybody's so dark, right? Well, we you know, large population, so dark. Like, How are we gonna tattoo them? It's not gonna show. That's the thing. That the, the breakthrough, the, the break, the breakthrough in discovering the type of ink that shows up on the darkest of our hues. Wow. Like that would put us in the game in such a way. You know yeah, what I mean? Because same thing with Jamaica, you know, because like you know, we people of the sun. Yeah. But we do repre- we do appreciate good artwork, yeah. and, and sometimes tattoo ain't always kind to our skin if we have like a, a even darker hue. You're like, right. yo, You're if right. you could get with like a like a some sort of like doctor or somebody you know the that funny can come thing with is, the ink. That's the only reason why I haven't opened up a shop in the in the Caribbean because because, because of that. Because everybody want in the Bahamas and Jamaica, they want a black ink so bad, but it's like. Man, is the skin gets so damaged from the sun? Y'all don't know how to stay out the sun. You're just gonna beat the tattoo up, like uh, bunch of people with neon tattoos. <laughs> like, yeah, they glowing. Who needs lights? Yo, Caesar, always love you coming. You, you 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 can't you can't make it every twelve month thing, man. Yo, my fault, but you know how this VH1 thing. Yeah, like they awesome. they got me filming Black Ink. They got me doing specials. You know, I got these new teeth, so I get to host stuff now. How's so. that feel? You know, cause like, yo, Denzel got the new teeth, and he got to go like this every. You know? Yeah, like it took me a while to just. I still spin on people from time to time, but I'm getting I'm getting good with it. Okay, I'm getting with it. Did it hurt? Nah, nah. It was more. I don't know if there was no. Nah, there wasn't no pain. I was more excited. I didn't care. And then you talking to me, I get tattoos all the time, so nothing hurts me. See, the crazy thing about like when people get new teeth. They refer to like periods in time of their life. See, back when you had the old teeth, you wasn't like this. Yeah, da, 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 da. It's like before teeth and after teeth. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like before Jesus, after Jesus time periods, like shit, stuff like that. You know yeah. what I mean? So before teeth, I was, oh man, I don't know. But after teeth, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Smiles for miles. Yeah. Yo, Caesar, people ain't following you. Where can they go? Oh man, if you ain't following me, it's Caesar Black Ink. Make sure you're following my shops. Just put in Black Ink Atlanta, Black Ink 125th, Black Ink 113th, Black Ink New Orleans, Black Ink Orlando. Oh, yeah. Black Ink Philly by June. Yeah. I, I ain't forget about Philly. Yeah, Mr. Potato Blackout right now. Yeah. And I'm rocking with it. Yeah, yeah. Yo, man, that season right there. Black Ink's the show Wednesdays. VH1, pull up, set your DVR so you get every episode. Head crack out the house. Go.